Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. I'm on a new series and it's called, What is the Gospel? In the first two teachings, I wanted to point out to you that what we think the gospel is, is the message about Jesus dying on the cross so that sinners would not go to hell. And what I want to prove to you through the Bible in verses through Jesus and what he said and what Paul and the other apostles was doing in the book of Acts and talked about is not what we're teaching today. Now listen, you guys know that I own some businesses, I own some restaurants. If I only retained about 5% of my customers that came in to my business as a business person, I would know that I have a huge problem with what I'm doing. I don't understand how we can have so many people come in and out of church, and even church people who stay inside the church who are broken and hurting, and all they're doing is praying for the rapture to come, uh, to snatch us up out of here, and, and, and we don't have any change in our lives to prove out scripture. Did you know the Bible tells us that we are more than overcomers? That we are exactly what Jesus is right now. That's a Bible scripture. What I see is that believers are living so far below what our inheritance, and look, and here's another thing. Did you know most of us think we have to die to get our inheritance? That is not how an inheritance works, guys. An inheritance works when the person with the goods dies and the benefactors get it immediately. Jesus is the one that died to give us our inheritance. We don't die so we can go to heaven to get our inheritance. Jesus died so he could give us our inheritance, okay? And that's something I probably need to tie into here uh, as well because the Bible doesn't say that our inheritance is a futuristic thing. What Jesus says and what our Bible say is that our inheritance is here and now on this earth, not at a later date when we die. Did you know that if I'm going to leave everything that I own to a person once I die and leave here, the person doesn't have to die to inherit what I've left behind. I'm the only one that dies to leave it behind. The person gets to enjoy that immediately. Same thing with the kingdom of God. Jesus brought the kingdom of God to earth. What do I mean by that? Jesus brought the culture, the system of heaven back down to earth. When it first started in the garden, the system of heaven was put here through Adam. Adam lost that system of how the earth was supposed to operate, and the devil took it, and it's operating on an evil system of sickness, death, sin, destruction. John 10.10, 10, the enemy, the thief. You know, Satan stole what God gave to us in Genesis. So the thief comes only for no other reason but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But watch this. Jesus says, I came to give you abundant life, that life in abundance. He brought the life of God back to earth so he could put it in us and we could once again, go back to the original plan that God had of having a human being made in his likeness and image with his spirit in them, living in this earth, multiplying the culture of heaven. The culture of heaven is the kingdom of God. That's what the word kingdom of God really means. Watch this. I'm going to do the Lord's Prayer for you. Our Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom come his culture, his ways, what's going on in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. What he wants to be done is being done in heaven, okay? And it comes down to earth, thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on this earth as it is in heaven. What Jesus is saying is that when he fulfills everything he needs to do through living here, not just dying, but living here, being a perfect son of God, fulfilling everything, role modeling what a son of God looks like and acts like, talks like, then he goes and he redeems all of mankind. And I've told you over and over again, the word redeem means to put back an original position, an original condition. In the beginning, Adam was made in the likeness and image of God. He had the Spirit of God in him because God breathed his Spirit into Adam. When Adam willfully rebelled and went against what God said, this is how this earth should operate, and Adam says, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to eat from the tree. We're going to do what we want to do down here, okay? So Adam loses through deception of the devil. He lost the kingdom of God, and what got put in place is the kingdom of Satan. Remember, it talks about the God of this world system, the uh, prince of the air, which means Satan, is here working his kingdom. Jesus comes and brings the kingdom of God back down. He invades this earth system that was overthrown in Genesis back into this earth. He brings the kingdom of God to this earth in the form of a man, a body, someone to do this and do it the right way, the way Adam failed. There's a scripture that says the first Adam and the last Adam. Adam was the first Adam in the garden, and he lost the kingdom of God on earth and gave the kingdom to Satan to have and to run. All through time, God worked to get Jesus born into the earth so that Jesus could bring, legally back bring, bring it back down into the earth, the kingdom of God. Jesus brought it. He arrived with it. He says it's here it's among you, and then he says it's in you. So the big picture with God was never just to get your sins forgiven so you don't go to hell. His goal was to get the sins out of the way so he can put his spirit back in you, and you can be a son or daughter of God living here on this earth, bringing the culture of heaven back here to earth. It's called pouring out the kingdom of God out of you into the earth. Now, I, I, I had all these scriptures made up that I wanted to read to you, but let me just start with, uh, I'm going, I want to read a scripture before I close out today, so let me just do this. Let me see. I'm going to read uh, right here in Mark 1.15. Jesus says this, The time has been fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is, is at hand. Repent, that means to change your attitude and your mind and the way you're living and believe the gospel of the kingdom of God. That's in red. Jesus says the time has arrived. The kingdom of God is here. Now believe the gospel of the kingdom that it is here and I'm going to put it in you and I'm going to make you just like me. You're going to be a son of God filled with the spirit of God. You will be restored. You'll be redeemed, put back in your position as a son, in your original condition as not a sinner, but a son of God filled with the Holy Spirit. That, my friends, is what the gospel is all about. The gospel of the kingdom of God is making people look just like Jesus. I'm going to let you go today, and tomorrow I'm going to pick right back up, and we're going to dig deeper. I love you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.